And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, and to their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you humbly, Lord, as I read this uh, verse of Scripture, Lord, out of the book of Revelation. Lord, I know and recognize this is the only book, Lord, that I see in your Bible, Lord, that's promised a blessing if we hear it or read it, Lord God. And I pray, Father, a special blessing on these people this morning, Lord God. I pray, Father, your Holy Spirit will lead God, direct us into all truth, Lord God. Help us to understand these uh, these words, Lord God. I believe every word of it, Lord. Don't mean I understand it, Lord, but I do acknowledge and believe every word of it, Father. Help us to understand it. Help us to grasp it, Lord God. And above all, above all else, Lord Jesus, please come back and get us. We're looking for you. In Jesus Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. All right, book of Revelation. Getting right back into it. Okay, so going back to chapter 6, verse 1, I want to show you this. Now, what we're going, when, you go, when we get through, as I go through and I'm doing a series of preaching on the book of Revelation, what I want to point out to you, and I'll point this over and over again, is that just like there's four separate accounts of the coming, the first coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you need all four accounts because they help each other. They, th those accounts are separate, and sometimes John is as, as different as the book of Matthew as you can get, but they complement each other, and you need them. And so there's four different accounts of the, gospel, um, of the gospel's first appearing of Jesus Christ, of our Lord and Savior. And remember, we've seen that that is shown in those four beasts that we've seen there in Revelation chapter 4. But just like there's four different separate accounts and four different tellings of the first coming of Jesus Christ, what you're going to notice in the book of Revelation, there's four accounts of the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, you're going to, and it's going to be given this way. In chapter 6, there's going to be seven seals. So the first account will go through, and then there'll be a parenthesis. There'll be a, a, a time period where he's talking about some other stuff, and I'll go over that when we get there. And then from chapter 7 to 11, there's the, com the second coming of Jesus Christ is described in trumpets. There's seven trumpets that are blown. And we'll go through each one of those seven trumpets like we're going to go through the seals this morning. And then in chapters 12 to 14, there's seven personages or activities of the Antichrist. Those personages will be like the beast that comes out of the sea, the beast that comes out of the earth, the false prophet. You've got uh, the Antichrist, of course. You've got uh, the woman, the sun-clothed woman, and the man-child, all these personages. And don't worry, I'll, I'll go through all those when we get to them, but that's the third telling. And then at the end of the book of Revelation, from chapters 15 to 19, is the fourth telling. It's the seven vials that are poured out. So you got seven seals, seven trumpets, seven personages, and then we'll have seven vials, and we'll get in that verse nine, chapter 19. That's Jesus Christ coming back, and it's exciting. I can't wait to get to that. It's, a, it's, it's wonderful. And so you, you just kind of keep that in mind because it can be kind of confusing because you'll see some of the reason why I'm showing this and saying this is because when we get into chapters 11 and 12 and 13, we get into some of these chapters here, you're going to say, well, that was already said back in chapter 6 because it's a retelling. And I'll try to point this stuff out, but it's a retelling. But just like all four of these, need, you need to have an account, all four of these, and they complement each other. All four of these complement because there's some things that are said there in the trumpets that's not mentioned in the vials or the seals, and I'll get into that when, it, when we get there. All right, so let's, let's take it the way it's being read there. Here's a picture of uh, a picture somebody's drawn up on the Internet of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, you no, Notice back in uh, verse 2. Let's read this again in verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We've got to figure out who this guy is on the, on the white horse. So you see this picture here. Here's one picture of the four horsemen. Here's another picture of the of, of, of drawing of the four horsemen there. There's something that's wrong with these pictures, and I'll, I'll show it to you. There's something wrong with this guy here on the white horse. We're focusing on the white horse right now. This picture here, whoever drew this picture drew him with a helmet. And I read there that it's a crown, right? All right, so let's go back. So here, this guy, he's got the crown, but there's still something not right with this picture of the, of the white horseman. And let me, let's read it again. Every word, brothers and sisters, you've got to read every word, and you've got to pay attention. Verse 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. No arrows. No arrows are mentioned. That's very important. No arrows are mentioned. So those two pictures of the Antichrist, because this is who's rising up as the Antichrist here, is showing him with arrows, but the Bible doesn't say he had arrows, it said he had a bow. So here's the, here's the picture that Dr. Ruckman drew, 
And I believe it's more biblically accurate. And you see him with the bow, but there's no arrows. What does that speak to, Brother Keegan? What that speaks to is a political power. Now, what you'll have some commentators, not a lot of them, but some commentators say that this horse here you're seeing in verse 2 is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's on a white horse, he has a crown, he went forth conquering and to conquering, conquer, conquering and to conquer, but that's not our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This one you're reading here is the rise of the Antichrist is what you're reading here. This Antichrist here has a bow. Our Lord and Savior, when he comes back, he has a sword. This man right here, he's followed by death and hell. Y'all just read it with me. Jesus Christ is followed by prosperity and peace like the world's never known. This is two different men. Our Lord and Savior, he doesn't have one crown. He has many crowns. This guy only has one crown right here. It says there that that crown there in verse 2 was given to him. And a crown was given unto him. Our Lord and Savior, nothing's given to him. He created everything. He's the Word. He's the Creator. He's God Almighty. So that, that's the difference between these two. They're separate. They're different. Now... What you're seeing there in verse 2 is very important to, to, to read. It says, And I saw him, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and, conquer, and to conquer. He's a politician. He's a conquering politician. Turn to Daniel chapter 8. Turn to Daniel chapter 8, and then we'll come back to Revelation. But in Daniel chapter 8, you can't, you can't study Revelation without going to the book of Daniel. So let's turn to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. And let's, let's read this together. So all through the book of Daniel, God gives Daniel the vision of the Antichrist and what, he, what to expect about this Antichrist that we're seeing rise up in the book of Revelation. And he's showing, up, he's showing in the book of Revelation it's been given a bow, and be, it has a bow and been given a crown. It speaks to political power. Now let's look at this prophecy. Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. And this is a prophecy of that king that you see rising up in the book of Revelation. That what's happening is Jesus Christ has opened that seal and he's allowing, allowing that, cri that Antichrist to rise up. So nothing's going to happen until God allows it to happen. Amen? Nothing happens until the Lord God's ready for it to happen. Verse 23, and in the latter time of their kingdom, talking about these king he's talking about all these kingdoms that they were talking about. Go home and read this if you've never read it. In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are coming to, a, to the full, do you think that the world's getting about full of wickedness as it can get? It's getting close. Getting pretty close. You got kids being, uh, you got uh, transgenders dancing and gyrating in front of kids right now in Texas. And I think, uh, I th when I think of Texas, I think this is God's country. You got that nonsense going on. How bad is it over in San Francisco and places like that? A king of fierce countenance, a king of fierce countenance is going to have a mean look on his face. And understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Don't forget that standing up. We talked about that in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Verse 24, look at this. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Uh-oh. See, he's a, political, he's a political man. He's got, that's not only speaking to the political, the, uh, the spiritual power the Antichrist will have through the devil, but he's going to have political power. He's a politician. The politicians can only do what we allow them to do. The politicians only can do what we allow them to do. And he's saying here, and through it says, and his power should be mighty, but not by his own power. See, he's, it's got, he's got a bow without arrows. He's got a bow without arrows. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The holy people, that's the Jews. So it's talking about the end times where the, where the church is raptured out and the Jews are left and they're going through the, uh, Jacob's trouble, that 70th week that I preached about. Verse 25, and through his policy, who has policies? Well, politicians. They have foreign policy, policies, they have financial policies. He's a politician. Through his policy, also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. So don't fall into the trap of call, calling Biden the Antichrist. <laughs> we're, not, we're about as least prosperous as you can be right now. Well, we lost how many trillions of dollars on the stock market since Biden took over? Biden is not the Antichrist. One of the signs of the Antichrist is going to be very prosperous. Trump was pretty prosperous when he came in, wasn't he? See, y'all don't like that, but Trump is a whole lot more of an Antichrist than Biden is, according to this book. George W. Bush was a lot more of an Antichrist than Obama was, according to this book. Read the book. <laughs> don't follow what Fox News tells you who to love and hate. Read the book. Be like me, hate them all, and then let God tell you which one to like. That's the way I do it. 
no, nah, that's not what I do. I, 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 I like some of those guys. I'm just not going to tell you because then you'll judge me. <laughs> and we found out in Sunday school, judge not lest you be judged. We found that out. <laughs> yeah. Verse 25, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. There it is. I want to be like the most God, like the most high God. And by peace, oh, he's a peacemaker. He's a peaceable guy. He's a peaceful politician. By peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. The prince of princes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he shall be broken without hand. That's the end of the Antichrist. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut thou up the vision for it shall be for many days. Many days. Back in Revelation chapter 6. That's a prophecy. The Antichrist as a politician. And you're seeing that show up in Revelation chapter 6 verse 2. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him. Had a bow. He had a bow. The sign of a bowman. The sign. The sign of a bowman. What's the sign of a bowman? Well, the sign of a bowman is this. Taking two fingers and going like this. That's the sign of a bowman right there. So if you look at the Catholic pictures of Jesus Christ, you're going to see the sign of a bowman right there. See, that's a Catholic rendition of Jesus Christ. There's the nail scarred hands, and they got him like that. The sign of a bowman. Here's another picture of Jesus Christ, Catholic Jesus Christ, depiction of Jesus Christ. You got him right there. That's the sign of a bowman. Why is that a sign of a bowman? Because the bowman goes, uses those two fingers and lets it go, shoots those bows. It says he shows up with a bow with no arrows. It's a sign of a bowman right there. So if you look this up, because I, I couldn't stand it, I had to look it up. Like, why do they, why do, they do that? Because it's a sign of a bowman. And their excuse is, they're saying these two fingers represent the Son of God. This finger is the Son of Man. This is the Trinity, those three fingers. You believe that? I got some real estate I can sell you down in Arizona. It's Greek beachfront. The point is, is that that's nonsense. It's more, it's more likely the sign of a bowman. That's, a, that's been a universal sign of a bowman for thousands and thousands of years. You'll see this when they make the statues of the Pope. This is Roman Catholic statue of the Pope there at the Vatican. They have these popes they've made statues out of. They always have them doing the sign of the bowman. See that up there? Sign of the bowman. Because he's a horseman. He comes out. He doesn't have a bow. He has a bow, no arrow. Sign of a bowman. Here's uh, Hitler's pope, Pope Pius XII. This is the pope that, was, uh, that, was, that Hitler was under. He helped a bunch of the Nazis get out of Germany when it fell. Uh, they, some people think that Hitler got out too. But the point is, is that there's the sign of a bowman right there, modern day giving you the sign of a bowman. So, take it or leave it. That's what, where we're at. Let's look at verse 3. Let's move on to the next one. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. Verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. There was given unto him a great sword. So this is the horseman of war. And he comes forth. And he comes forth to destroy. Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter 24 when the disciples asked Jesus Christ, what's the sign of the end times when the world will end? He said, Those shall be, you shall hear wars and rumors of war. And that's what we hear every day. There's wars and rumors of war. Poor old Ace, AOC, 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 what's her name? Alexander, whatever her name is, that, that Puerto Rican up there in uh, New York. She got up there. She had one of her town hall meetings, and man, some of those liberals showed up, and they're like, you're a warmonger. You want war. You're bringing us into World War III. She didn't know what to do. I wouldn't have known what to do either. I would have left. She tried to talk to her. I would have left. But the point is, is that it's always, it's always war. People are afraid of war. Everybody's scared of war, and that's what you have going on. Notice verse 4. Notice, very important. And there went out another horse that was red. That's red China and red Russia. Huh. What's the, what's the colors of Chinese? The Chinese is red China. What's the color of Russia? It's known for being red, red Russia. Now, turn to Revelation chapter 16. Let's skip ahead, and I'll show you a little bit more on this. Revelation chapter 16. And we'll get into all of this again when we get to Revelation 16, but I'm going to give you kind of a, kind of a spoiler alert. We're going to look at this a little, little deeper when we get there. But look at Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. Revelation 16, verse 12, red China, red Russia, said the color of that horse was red. Those colors mean something. So when the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, the way, that the way of the kings of the east 
might be prepared. Who's east? Now, y'all might not be able to see it, but who, who's east of Israel? Here's Israel on this map right here. Who's east of Israel? Well, Russia and China right up in here. And the Bible says there's a river that runs, the river Euphrates runs right through there. Down here to the Persian Gulf, right through there. And here's Israel right here. And it says the ways of the kings of the east might be waste. A 200 million man army. There's only one country that can gather a 200 million man army right now. That's China. And it's amazing when you go back to Revelation chapter 6. It's amazing when you're in Revelation chapter 6, it says it was a red horse. That's red China. That's red Russia. They're going to go into, you know there's two countries that are doing war games together right now? Guess who it is? Russia and China. This has been going on since 2003. Man, we, you should be scared. If you're, if you're just an American living in this country and you don't have Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you should be scared. Because you know what that means? We're going to probably get raptured. We're going to get raptured out before most of this happens. But America doesn't have a chance if China, Russia turns on us. We have no chance unless God intervenes. And, and, and this country has forgotten about God a long time ago. And it's, you know what? The, reason, the re, only reason China, Russia hadn't come in and did, something, what they, what, did anything they don't want to do is because of Christians like y'all in this country. God's holding this country out because of you guys. But as soon as we are out of here, off with they head, as they say, off with they head. Verse 5, look at verse 5, Revelation 6, 5. And when he had opened the third seal, when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. This, these are all pictures that Dr. Ruckman has drawn out of his book, the uh, book of Revelation. He has a book you can buy. So I, he gets uh, it's, it's copyrighted by Dr. Ruckman in his in his uh, <coughs> Bible bookstore. I'm just using it because I, it's the most accurate I've seen. In this picture of the black horse, you might not be able to see it very well, but this guy on here is kind of chubby. He's he's definitely well fed on here. The guy he has right, and I think that's a good good indication. He has balances in his hand. Look look at verse six. Now let's break this down. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. So I studied that out. I've been studying the book of Revelation for years and years and studied that out. So that's a day's wages for just one ration of a slave. So it's just a little, you're working all day long for a piece of bread. That's what you, that way the economy falls apart. In the tribulation, uh, in the tribulation period, the economy falls apart. So... Antichrist comes in peaceably, everything's prospering, and then he gets assassinated about halfway through, about three and a half years through that tribulation. He, he has an agreement with the Jews, half, about halfway through that tribulation period, everything's prosperous, everything's wonderful, and then he gets assassinated, and it all starts falling apart. And when it falls apart, it's going to fall apart big time. And that's what that's showing you. A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil in the wine. Hurt not the oil in the wine. The rich are going to get richer. So when I first started studying the book of Revelation back in uh, 1992, I was studying it and I, had, I, found, I didn't know anything, so I went and found this book and I read this book on the book of Revelation. I think it was, I think it's actually called Revelation to Dummies. I think it's the way it was when I think about it. But in that book, it said that oil right there could be medicine, but we don't know. Well, come on, man. I know what that is. You know what OIL is? It means OIL. And it's amazing to see we're living in 2022. What is everybody talking about right now? O and I and the L. And from 1992 into 2022, I've never seen more wineries come into Texas than this part of Texas. Like when I grew up, wineries were something that happened over in California and France. That was winery. And then all of a sudden, they started getting some in Comanche County. And then they started getting some here. And there's one just right down the road. Is that thing still going? That that, that, yeah, okay. The other by Newburgh. My point is, we tried to get a sign for the church because people would miss us. So we were going to get a sign, the state of Texas can put a sign up there and say, you know, church is this way, like Indian Gap, this way. And uh, even if it just said Indian Gap, you know, Indian, it don't have to say church, it say Indian Gap. They wouldn't do it. We called and talked to them, they wouldn't do it. But when you're coming up here, every winery you see, it says, Winery of Texas, Spirit of Winery of Texas, and he'll give you a sign there, put there by the state of Texas. Don't hurt the oil of the wine. What's going on today? Well, we're dealing with the oil. This is just a few days ago. U.S. officials had a secret oil deal with the Saudis, or so they thought. This is the New York Times. 
After Saudi Arabia pushed to slash oil production, despite a vision by President Biden, American officials have been left fuming that they, and then this picture's covering it up, that they didn't, that they went ahead and cut the oil production because Biden thought, hey, I need some more oil because it'll make, it'll make the price of gas go down and then midter midterm elections are coming up and then it won't look, make me look so bad. And he's trying to make all, he's going up there dealing with the, where's that at? Well, if I, had, if I, if I know who dresses like that, that's right over here, Right? <laughs> those little bitty countries. You know, you can put a lot of those countries in Texas right now. That's how little they are. But everybody's eyes are right there. Our president has to go over there and bump fists with him. Can you, can you look at that? Bumping fists with him. Hurting out the oil. As much as they want to go green, as much as they want to go to electricity, as much as they want to put all these ugly wind turbines up all over here, it's all about the oil, guys. This is just a few days ago, maybe a week ago. <laughs> oil protesters throw, so throw soup on Van Gogh painting. See, that's CNBC, October 14th, 2022. These girls break in, they go into the museum, and they get a, oil, they get a, a can of, 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 I guess, Campbell's soup, and they throw it all over this Van Gogh painting. And then they glue themselves to the wall here, and it had their shirts say, Just Stop Oil, Just Stop Oil. It's all about the oil. You say, how did they? How are they able to get in to the museum with a can of soup in them? How'd they do that? Well, I can tell you. Have you ever seen people that color their hair that color? The, the, the last thing they worry about is hygiene. So you're probably not going to want to get around them. And no, I'm just checking that out. I'm just a, I'm just an old guy. I don't like the new colored pink hair and everything. They made this painting look a little better though, didn't they? It was a Van Gogh. That's just, that's just my opinion. You know, it's <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. That was written. Do not, do not forget to think and remember that verse 6, hurt not the oil and the wine, was written over 2,000 years ago, right about 2,000 years ago. That's a prophecy happening right before your very eyes, brothers and sisters. You got the right book. It's sitting in your lap. You got the right book. It's ahead of anything, it's ahead of everything you can think of. It's ahead of everything you can think of. Any newspaper, any Fox News, CNN, it's ahead of every one of them. It's ahead of them. You need to be reading this. Read this before you listen to anything going on with the news. All right, verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. That's death personified. That's like the death angel. See that capital D? It's death personified. And there's hell. Hell personified. Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Fourth part of the earth kill them. Now, the war is going to, the war there in verse 4, the war horsemen, He's killing them with war. They're killing them. And then there's, there's a guy coming up, and he's killing them with famine and pestilence. And now you got this one's killing them. This one's just killing them with the sword and with hunger and with death. Just all around killing them. Make sure they're dying. And it's death falling with them. See that? Here's something interesting here at the end of verse 8. It says, And power is given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death. And with the beasts of the earth. With death. Death is killing them with death. That kind of is weird. Uh, I'm going to be teaching in Ecclesiastes on Wednesday night if you're able to make it up here. If not, follow me. Maybe, hopefully, you can follow me online. Uh, if, you, if you'll follow me online or, 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 or keep up with me on Wednesday nights, I'm going to be teaching on that in a few, uh, couple of, two or three Wednesdays in the, uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes. And I'll show you what that death is and what that, that's, that's associated with the shadow of death. If you've never, never heard of the shadow of death, I'll show you all the verses for the shadow of death. We'll run them, and you'll see what the shadow of death is. It has to do with the Bab Babylonian, uh, Babylonian and a bunch of other stuff. I'll show you all of that. But we don't have time on a Sunday, in a Sunday morning service to do that. But keep up with me there, and you'll, you'll learn something. And the, with the beasts of the earth, have you noticed that? It says with the killing with the beasts of the earth. Notice that there's more and more shark attacks. There's more and more bear attacks. There's more and more... They'll show the vineyard, and they'll, be, they'll, they'll show an overview of, of, the, of the beach, and there'll be all these swarming sharks at the beach, and they're not letting them swim on the beach. Keep an eye on that. You're going to see a lot more animal attack, a lot more 
beastly attacks. And that, that's just showing you it's a time of the end. It's a, it's a time of the end is what it's showing you. Look at verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw on the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. They were killed for the word of God. There's going to come a time in America where you're going to be killed for the word of God. I'm not trying to uh, be a Debbie Downer about this, but there is a time going to come. I really, it is coming. Where this book is going to be outlawed. You say, why would they outlaw this book? All of Jesus Christ is, talks about is love. Yeah, that's because you don't read your Bible. Because <laughs> he talks a whole lot more about lo- than about love in this book right here. This book condemns almost everything you're seeing going on in TV and movies today. Everything. This book has been classified as hate literature by a lot of people. And there, you're gonna, it, to have a book like this, you're, gonna be, it's, it, you're full of hate. And to believe a book like this, you're full of hate. They're calling us Nazis now. You don't think you're going to get killed for that? They're out to kill you. What, do you think they're going to want to just hug you and say, I hope you get better? No, they want you to die. We talked about it in Sunday school. They don't judge like we judge. We're supposed to judge with love and grace and mercy. The way they judge is with hate and killing, and they want, they want you to go away. They want you to die. That's how, they, that's how they judge. Verse 10, and they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does, not, does thou... Not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. They have a right to cry that. We don't. We don't have a right to cry that. These are tribulation saints, guys, that that are going to be killed during the tribulation period. The church is raptured out, but they're going to be killed during all this that takes place with these horsemen. Because look, verse 11, and white robes were given unto every one of them. These souls are wearing white white robes. So so it shows that a soul has a bodily shape. They're wearing white robes. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until the fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. The rest of the tribulation saints that are going to get killed by the Antichrist have their heads cut off. That's what they're going to have to wait on, and then they'll, all, then they'll get their vengeance. Look at verse 12 now. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the reason why the moon would come up as blood is because when that, vo- that volcanic, when that earthquake takes place and it shoves all that, earth, that dirt up in the air, any kind of sun or the moon, it's going to be dark and it's going to make it look red. That's why that, that moon, I mean that sun looks red when it's going down and it hits that horizon. You're seeing that through all the dirt and all the dust. That's why it says it's going to turn red right there. It says, uh, and behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. So if you have a, you have a great earthquake, and the, and the earth is full of is 70% water, you're going to have some of the worst tsunamis the world's ever known. This is the greatest earthquake the world's ever known. And the Bible has describes it in Isaiah 24 as like a, a drunken man waking up, and he's going to just shake it. It won't be just a little bit. It'll be a wobble. And when he wobbles that earth, you're going to have tidal waves hundreds and hundreds of feet tall coming in onto the, into the, into the shorelines. It's going to be some great tsunamis. One tsunami, when it hit India, killed, I think, 400,000, 500,000 people. Just like that. Half a billion people. Just, I mean, half, just half a million people just gone like that. That's, how, that's, that's what we're looking at right here with this great earthquake. And the st- verse 13, And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast her t- untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, there's two different ways to read and interpret verse 13. The stars of heaven, it could be meteorites. When you're outside, you see, a, a sh- they'll call it a shooting star or a falling star. What you're seeing is you're seeing a meteorite hitting the atmosphere. It could be a meteorites, bunch of, me- bunch of meteorite, a meteorite showers. Or it could be, because in the book of Revelation, even, stars are mentioned as angels. Angels are mentioned as stars. So we're getting to the end of the tribulation period here in verse 13. And it could be associated when the devil and his angels are kicked out of heaven. And we'll get to that in Revelation 12. The devil and his angels get kicked out of heaven. If you've never heard that, uh, just keep with me. And we'll, I'll show you that. But that could be what that's talking about. Look at verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. That sounds a lot like an atomic explosion. Because if you ever study the atomic explosions, uh, like on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, when they went off, the bu- what happens is when that, when that bomb goes off, it rolls up, it, goes, it sucks it all in, goes, rolls it in like a scroll, and boom, like that. 
And that's what it sounds like is going on. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. And so you see, one, here's one going off, and here's an here's a, a, a aerial view of it. It's a mountain space, a bomb going off. Isn't that what we're all worried about is the next World War III will not, won't, be, won't be with guns, it won't be with bullets, it'll be with atomic explosion, it'll be with atomic warheads. That's what everybody's worried about with Russia. And now Korea's got their atomic warhead. Nuclear, they have nuclear capability. Korea does. Iran is getting it because Kerry and Obama dropped the ball and allowed them to do it. That's what Israel's worried about. Israel's not worried about anything but Iran because Iran's wanting to wipe them off. We're worried about Russia. What's Russia going to do with Ukraine? Because Ukraine, are they going to use nuclear weapons against Ukraine? See, all this stuff goes back to what we're reading. It's wars and rumors of wars. Turn to Zechariah chapter 14. If you're still with me, turn to Zechariah chapter 14. I'm just showing you some atomic explosions. Uh, this is Nagasaki over in Japan. When we dropped that, when we dropped that bomb in World War II, it's hard to see maybe because I have the lights turned on, but here is an aerial view before and an aerial view after. You see, this is ground zero, and you can see it looks like a desert land right there. Here's all these houses, all this community, all this population here is just, just wiped out. Think about, that's just one, that's just one bomb. Think about hundreds of bombs going off. Russia shoots at America, America shoots at Russia, North Korea shoots theirs off, China shoots theirs off, everybody's shooting off at each other. It says there that the heaven departed as a scroll. Look at Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah is before the book of Matthew. If you can't find it. If you find the book of Matthew in your Bible, turn to the left. You'll find Malachi, and then right next to it is Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 14. Look at verse 12. Look at this amazing prophecy. Here's another picture of Here's another picture of uh, Nagasaki after the bomb went off, just totally destroyed. It looks like hell on earth. That's what the tribulation period is going to be. It's going to be hell on earth. God pouring his wrath out on mankind. This is, going, this is just a little taste of it. That's the tribulation period. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and, you don't, and the Lord don't take you before then, if you don't die before then, that's what you're going to go through right here. That's what's waiting on you. As a Christian, we're up in heaven. We're raptured out. Remember, we, we looked at that. All right, look at Revel, uh, excuse me, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. This should be the plague wherewith the Lord, this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Remember, they come up against Jerusalem, and they're, they're fighting the Antichrist, and their army is like the battle arm again. Look at this. Their flesh cons shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth while they're standing. The only thing I know of that could do that is an atomic explosion. Consumes away while you're standing, it's consuming away. Here's another shot of an atomic bomb going off. Just wiping it out. This, this is, it's, just, it's a no man's land now. Most of the Lord's going to clean this place up like that before we come back. And then it's going to regenerate. Jesus Christ said in the regeneration, he's going to regenerate this earth and make it green again where the lamb and the lion can lay down again. Right now, this is what sin brings. This is what man does, this is what man does right here. This is what America did. The land of the free, home of the brave. That's what we did right here. I'm not very proud of it, but we had to do it, right? Because they were attacking us. We had to do it. That's what war does. That's why we're waiting on Jesus Christ to come back so we'll have a time of peace. There will never be an end to wars until Jesus Christ comes back. It won't happen. Look at Isaiah 13. Look at Isaiah 13. We're closing up, guys. Isaiah 13. I'll show you a few more of these. And then we'll go back and finish Revelation. Isaiah 13, 8. All this is through the Bible. You see these little hints of prophecy through the Bible of it. It looks like an atomic explosion going off. And they, that, and they shall be afraid, verse 18, Isaiah 13, 8. Excuse me, not 18, verse 8. 13, 8. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Look at this. Their faces shall be as flames. 
lights them up like a candle. Whoosh. Isaiah 34, 4. Isaiah 34, 4. Your faces, faces will be like flames. It's all these inferences of, of a it's horrible event. It sounds like an atomic explosion. Verse 1. Come near you nations to hear. This is Isaiah 34, 1. Come near you nations to hear and hearken you people. Let the earth hear and all that, all that is therein the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. That includes America. Every nation. And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly, utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from the vine. And as a falling fig. From the fig tree. Now this is a time of trouble. When God pours his wrath out on mankind. And that's what you're reading there in Revelation. So let's go back and finish up the book of Revelation. Let's go back and finish up the book of Revelation. I'm just showing you some pictures. Here's, a, here's a, somebody who comes through Nagasaki. And their flesh is just burned away. Their flesh is consumed away while they stand upon their feet. And that's a, that's a picture of them in the hospital. It's a horrible event. And uh, it's something that God's showing us. It's God's gracious enough to show us what's going to happen because we, we won't repent. We won't repent and turn back to Jesus Christ. All right, so let's finish this up. Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. And the kings of the earth, now this is after this explosion, everything that's going on. Look at verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. You know what your government's done? They built underground bunkers. There's, there's, there's thousands, uh, that's, pardon me. There's hundreds of miles of underground bunkers for the congressman, for the Senate, for the president, the vice president, all, it's all underneath there. Why are they doing that? Because they know if an atomic explosion goes off, you're going to have to be underground to survive because of the radiation and everything. And they're hiding themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. And Micah, God says, they're going to be like worms coming out of their holes. That's what Micah, God describes them in Micah. It's going to be like worms coming out of their holes. Verse 16, and he said to the mountains and to the rocks, and they, this is what they say, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. That's Jesus Christ. You ever heard of a lamb getting mad? You're not going to. When I, I, I grew up around a guy that was, uh, I didn't grow, I passed a church with a guy who raised lambs. You know what he used to tell me about lambs? He says, they're just looking for a place to die. They're looking for a good place to die. That's how he described them. Sheep are just looking for a good place to die. This is a mean sheep. This is a mean lamb. He's killing everybody. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of the lamb, it's the wrath of Jesus Christ. You're not going to go through that, Christian. I showed you the verses if you were here. Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath has come. And here's the question, and who shall be able to stand? Nobody. I'll answer that, nobody. You say, though that's a mean God, he's a holy God. And he's about to clean it all up. You say, well, why is he doing that? Why is he being so mean? Why is he cleaning it up? Well, I, I can't answer everything, but let me, give you, let me give you a clue. And I'll finish off by saying this. Let me give you just one clue. The reason why God is doing that is because he is God. Understand what I just said. When I say God, he created every one of you in here, and he can do whatever he wants to do to you. What, what should I do with that? What you should do with that is you should recognize that he's your creator, and here's your God, you better get right with him. Because he has a right over your breath, over your heartbeat right now, over your mind, over your mental condition. He, he could put you like he did Job. He could put the worst disease you ever dreamed up on you. And you could be doing everything right. That's our God. So can you explain it? I can't explain every bit, but what I can tell you to do is get as close and get as right with him as you can. And the only way you can do that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You've got to go to Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, when I did that, I got all the peace a man could ever have. I don't know where I'm going to go. I know I'm not going to go through all this. I'm reading what other people are going to experience. I'm going to be up in heaven. 
when all this was going on. And not because of anything I did, not because of any work I did, but because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your precious blood, Lord God. And I pray if there's somebody in this room that doesn't know you as the Lord and Savior, Father, that you would speak to the heart the truth. And Lord, they, when we get this invitation, Lord, they'll come on down and get saved, Lord God, and just take you, Lord God, as their Lord and Savior. Lord, it's simple, and I know you've made it simple, Lord, that anybody could do it, Lord. It doesn't matter if they're in.